and students who were trained from the age of 12, Jewish students, were expected to remember by rote what they were taught. So the second point I'd like to make is this, that not only was uh, Oriental memory uh, the thing and not the exception, today it's the exception, but back then it was the, the way to go. But the second point is this, that um, note-taking was also encouraged. In fact, we have records of shorthand being used, Dr. Bill, in the time of Christ, in many countries of the Roman Empire. And, I, and it can, you can be virtually certain that not only was oral transmission being used, but there's good reason to believe that not only the disciples, but sometimes even the audiences of Jesus were taking notes during his sermons and or soon after. Uh, shorthand was used extensively. Lecture notes were used extensively. And that almost guarantees that the very early written records of Jesus' sayings existed even before the Gospels were put down in that form. Yeah, there were common sayings that were such kernels of spiritual wisdom that they would be remembered by thousands of people. That's true. Now, you've brought up another point here which is very important, and that is that Jesus' presentations, his messianic presentations, were presented in such a way that they would be easily remembered. Right. Now, Jesus used um, memory-aiding devices like parables, exaggerations, puns, metaphors, similes, uh, proverbs, riddles, and so on. And this would aid his audience in retaining the teachings. He used it poetically for this purpose. And this was a common method of successful teaching in his day. But he, of course, is the prime example of it, and no one can improve on his method of teaching. Very, very easy to remember his words. And uh, we can be sure that, as, as did the ordinary teachers of his day, Jesus would not be less than that. He'd be greater. But we need to consider that he would have taught the same thing many, many times, ensuring that his disciples would have the entire set of lessons committed to memory. Exactly, yeah. The, now, the important thing is, the addendum to that, is we're seeing a lot of rising of false prophets now. And as the title says, can you give us a little bit of an indication of what they'll find when they get this e-book? Oh, yes, sure. Okay. Uh, we'll go through the Jesus historical or not. We'll, we'll go through was Jesus later turned into a god. Uh, I'll, I'll give abundant documentary evidence on uh, was the New Testament written by eyewitnesses or was it not? And we'll take that from many, many angles. Now, another important aspect was has the New Testament been altered? How much time is, does it take for a myth to grow? In other words, if it's all a myth... How much time does it take for a myth to grow? Uh, what copies escaped corruption from Constantine? Can we trace the copies? Yes, we can. How many manuscripts have survived? How close are these to the originals? Now, a point I'd like to make here on this is um, the closeness to the originals because we accept without any question many ancient documents which uh, we consider to, uh, to be reliable, uh, Caesar's Gallic Wars, uh, Roman history of Levi, we, we consider the, the annals, uh, Homer's Iliad and so on. And people don't question their his, historic value as to accuracy of events. But all of these are hundreds of years after the originals, whereas what they've got in the New Testament, and the whole Bible for that matter, is documents which are within the lifetime of the originals. We do have some documents that early. And not only that, the amount of manuscripts that we have is weighted tremendously in favor of the New Testament. Now, let's, let's just compare for a moment the Iliad of Homer, or we could perhaps even bring in the Mahabharata of the Indians. Compare this with the New Testament. The Iliad has about 15,600 lines, and the lines that we have in doubt amount to 5% that textual corruption. Lines in doubt are 764. Now, the Mahabharata 
has a quarter of a million lines, 250,000 lines, and we have 26,000 of those in doubt. That's a 10% textual corruption. The New Testament has 20,000 lines, and the lines in doubt are 40. That's only half percent textual corruption. And that half percent is not relating to words so much, much as to punctuation and spellings and, and such so much. So this gives us the New Testament's reliability is far greater than any other record on this planet from the ancient times. Exactly, yeah. Uh, the, the thing that's interesting to me is that considering what's going on in our world nowadays, wouldn't you think that people would want to know the truth that the Creator did care about them, they weren't just a highly evolved uh, piece of slime, and that they aren't about to die in a cataclysm coming either with thermonuclear war, biological war, or some galactic or cosmic event, that they would want to think that there's, yeah. quote, a point. And that's it, you know, is there a point to being here? Yes, there is. There's a point that the Creator created you because He loved us, He wants us to hear and do His will, and He even loved us enough to come in the flesh. And that's the whole point, is that the Creator did come in the flesh, and He's coming back, and it's soon, because some of the events that he told us, specifically in Matthew, are happening as we speak. Okay. Now, what, where I'm coming from here on, on, on the subject we've got today, Dr. Bill, is that we, we have documents here that we can rely upon. Archaeologically, there's no way anyone can undermine them. Absolutely. I've done a stuff. I've done a thorough investigation of this, as I believe is possible, and I, I would challenge any skeptic, any atheist, uh, any critic, to undermine the evidence, <coughs> the evidence in the book that I have just released. Uh, we, we, we've got a, a document here which is absolutely watertight. It's watertight archaeologically, historically, and prophetically. Uh, I, I cannot find one prophecy in this book that has yet failed. Right. Everything is on track. In fact, there are prophecies in this book which are chronological, and you can follow the chronology by history, and it's coming right up to where we are now, and it, it, there's a convergence here, like the spokes in a wheel coming toward the center to yeah. meet each other. Absolutely. History and prophecy are converging at this very moment. Wonderful. We'll have to have you back soon. Again, the title of the ebook and the website again, Jonathan, is... The website is beforeus.com. The book is Who's Playing Jesus Games. Now, Absolutely. at the bottom of the website, Dr. Bill, there's a link to other products. That's the link to find for this book, Who's Playing Jesus Games. Amazing, amazing. You always do your homework and you present such a remarkable facts that cannot be disputed. We'll be back with you soon. And again, remember, have a great and safe Thanksgiving, everyone. And prepare for what's coming in the future spiritually, physically, emotionally, and get your nutraceuticals, your food in, because we are approaching, as it says in the book of Daniel, the times of the end.